All right, Beth. We get to talk about something that I know is near and dear to my heart, and I know it's near and dear to yours. Yes. Pricing. Yes. <laughs> it's probably the thing that we get asked most often is pricing, pricing, pricing. How do I price? my products or people will call and I'm sure that you get lots of these. Will you look at my price list? What do, what do you think? Well, the first thing I always say, people will hand me a price list and they'll say, well, what do you think of my price, my price list? I'm like, well, honestly, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like I can look at it and I can tell you design aesthetically how it looks, but honestly, I can't evaluate it until I know what you want to achieve with it. And that's part of the biggest problem that I see is people don't sit down and understand what their goal is, what their price list is trying to achieve. What right. do I want to achieve with that price list? And most of the time they know, but they just don't know. Right. Because right. they know they want an average. And so basically for me, the, the price menu is just a tool to help me achieve my average. So when people start, they always say, okay, well, how much should I charge for an eight by 10? Right. Like that is like one of those things that you end with. You don't even think about I don't what even an eight think by 10 about is. What an eight by 10 costs <laughs> at first. Not, that's like so far down in the list because right, hopefully right. I'm not selling eight by tens. That's right. not my ultimate goal. So what's the very, well, your, 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 let's, you know, we, we talked about your Christmas promotion, um, but you also have a price list that, um, is more boutique pricing, Correct. but really the process for creating your price list is the same. It's the same. Your, what do you, what's the first thing you do? The first thing I do is I decide, you know, how long is the session going to take? How much work is involved on myself, on my staff? Is it the average, and I've done it for years, so I know approximately, you know, how long a senior session is going to take and how much work on the back end I'm going to do, the same way with a, a child. So I sort of so you sit, kind of evaluate your time? I kind of evaluate, I take my time first okay. and how long it's going to take. So then, like, for example, it's really easy. So most senior sessions take about three hours. Mm -hmm. So I have that time block that's, probably the biggest portion of my income. Okay. So I have that three hour time lock. What can I do in three hours to achieve the average I need to make per hour to make me profitable? Okay. So, um, for example, like for a senior that I do in three hours, you know, our average is about $2,000. So if I'm going to down to, um, children's sessions and I can do two children's sessions in that same three hour span and with children, you have to give a little padding. So you can't just go one, 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 one right away. Right. So then I know that I need to achieve, you know, an average sale of at least a thousand dollars per mm -hmm. to make the same as if I shot a senior. So you, you have to think about lost opportunity. And I have a feeling that a lot of people, a lot of photographers don't really think of the idea of I could do something else in that time to be profitable. Right. All right. So we're getting in, there's lots of little pieces oh, yeah. here. So, uh -huh. so let's go back to the, the first thing. One of the things that, um, that we, we teach it at professional photographers of America when we're talking to people is sales and sessions projections mm -hmm. for you, because you've done this for so long, right? You already know and have a consistent number of sessions that, you know, you photograph every year, right? So you've already in your head kind of done that analysis. You know, mm -hmm. if you do 60 seniors, at a $2,000 average, you're going to have, you know, 120,000 in sales. Right. So, so you kind of already kind of skip that step because right. it's what you do. I've right? done it for you. Yes. Right. So you have that already in the back of your mind. So, mm -hmm. so if you're starting fresh, brand new, mm -hmm. would you recommend just sitting down and kind of writing out kind of a, that whole sales and sessions projection so that people can get an idea of what even they're trying to accomplish? Yes, because I think that's the biggest problem with a lot of people is they don't really sit down and know what they're trying to achieve when they make that pricing structure. So they need to know right. what that average is going to be. And, and then once you understand that, then you can really sit down and create a pricing strategy for your price list to achieve those goals. So if you if you've been in business for a while, mm -hmm. you can kind of tweak your price list and you can kind of work with that right. looking at what your past has been. Right. Um, so say for example, we're trying to create a price list and we want the average sale to be $800. Mm -hmm. Tell me how, like, what do you do to get there? How do you, how do you develop that? Well, for, for me, like I actually sell, I do collections or packages, um, because I feel like it's a lot easier for me to hit those target price points a lot quicker. Right. So, for example, if I do an a, a, a la carte system, basically every sale starts at zero. <laughs> right, right, right. And this way you kind of guide your clients a little bit better. Right. You I, give them a starting place. And they don't really know what they want. They come in and they've never done it before. They don't 
you know, they don't really right. know. So for me, you know, I can have an entry level. So I, I can say my lowest package is, you know, X, Y, Z dollars, you know, for seniors, it's like 600. So, you know, that it's a starting point. I'm starting at $600. So you're deciding where your barrier to entry is going to be. Exactly. How high or low that's right. going to be. Exactly. And because seniors are more boutique for you, mm -hmm. you're going to set that a little bit higher than Right. You and would. they take longer. And, and, and so I can mm -hmm. do in the same time span, do less. So, um, yes, so I set that up. And then I basically sit down knowing that I want, like, if I wanted an $800 average, I would basically sit down and say, okay, I'm going to have five collections. We're going to start there, you know, and so you'd have one, two, three, four, five. And in the third spot, I would have $800. Okay. So, okay. boom, you're at $800. So you're putting what you want your average to be? Right in the middle. In the middle. <laughs> okay. Right. Because people always go to the middle. People go to the middle. <laughs> that makes sense. People are going to go right to the middle. Sure. So immediately right out of the, the gate. And now I haven't figured out what's going to be in that package or <laughs> anything like that. You just know you're going to charge 800 I know 800. that that third, <laughs> the middle package is going to be $800 because that's what I want to achieve. Right. And okay. then I'm going to sit down and so start thinking other things. Well, what's, what's going to be my barrier to entry level? that's where number one is. I don't want anybody to buy number one. Right. Right. And, and my fifth package is going to be, you know, exorbitant. You know, you don't want anybody to buy that package either, but it basically, well, you wouldn't mind if you they wouldn't bought that package. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you can, they just might not buy it as can, often. They won't buy it as often. <laughs> I mean, that's not the, you know, but the goal is to set up the value for the for the mid area, which right. people want to go, they want to feel normal, average. They want to do what other people do. What do most people do? They ask me all the time. Well, you know, they do they this. Do this. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's that simple. Right. And then they'd also don't feel like it's such a sales pitch either because you're not pushing them to the higher levels until they go, you know, then they can go there. Right. But again, it gives them a little it's comfort. It's a comfort zone, you know, and I market to more of a, you know, family oriented, blue collar kind of community and they want to feel safe and caught, you know, that's, that's fairly safe for them. And they can look and say, well, I, I, that's too expensive, but this now seems reasonable. <laughs> right. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So you've laid out your price points first mm -hmm. and then you start putting in what those products are going to be within each package. Exactly. And so how do you figure out which products go into each package? Well, that's the more, a little bit more complicated part. So for me, because I have been doing it for a while, I know what clients want. I know what they desire. Mm -hmm. So, and, and, and if you're new, it is hard to figure out exactly what your clients want out, out, of, out of their session. You know, ask questions. You know, and you sit down in the pre-consultation or whatever, what are you looking for? I mean, as you talk to your clients, you should realize what, what they want. So for me... I try to, you know, at 800, you know, to me, I sit down and think, okay, what are the most desirable products that my clients want? And so I might sit down and make a list of what do I think my most desirable products are and where are they going to get included? Okay. So maybe they don't get some of those more desirable things or something that everybody wants until they hit that price point. Okay. So it's a carrot for them to go into that price. Exactly. So you, it's basically an incentive. Okay. They want this and maybe it's a wall portrait or maybe it's, you know, the number of images they're going to get to select from, or maybe it's a, a, a small storybook. I don't, you know, I'm mm -hmm. not sure what other people are going to find motivates their clients, right, but right. you know, I know what, motivates my clients so I um, can put that in there and sometimes it changes I mean we've seen a lot of changes mm -hmm. in this industry for you you know in the last five to ten years right. so you know I'm always tweaking trying to figure out how I'm going to move people to, to achieve those averages am I achieving the averages and maybe I need to put a better incentive e in there or most of the time it's like well everybody too many people are going there I need that to be higher priced right <laughs> right um, so that becomes your no-brainer. Like right. it's, it would be dumb to not get that collection because right, it's exactly. so much better. You want than it to be unable. It's what it's called. It's the unable to resist sales strategy. Gotcha. So basically, it's you can't do anything other than that. I, mean, I really have a really great example, and I'm, I'd like to share it. It might be a little <laughs> off, but it's kind of funny. Okay. <laughs> we can cut it if oh, great. it gets really weird. <laughs> Okay, if you've ever been to a Brazilian steakhouse, have you ever been to a Brazilian steakhouse? No, but yes, I know, I know about you them. You know about them. Mm -hmm. So they use the unable to resist sales strategy. Okay. So they come in, you look down at the pricing menu, which same as ours, it's a pricing menu, and you sit down and, and they, they, the top of the thing is the parade of meats. 
like the parade of meats. You can buy <laughs> all the meats you want. We're going to parade it around on a bunch of sticks. And then you can eat as much or as little meat as you want. You can go to the buffet and have all the vegetables you want. It's the parade of meats. And I look down at the parade of meats and I'm like, I don't know, like thirty nine ninety five. Like ugh, that's a lot of meat. <laughs> right. I don't really think I'm that hungry, so I'm like, well, I'll just go down and look at the a la carte menu and see what I want. So I go down to the a la carte menu and guess what? For an a la carte meal, the cheapest one is thirty four ninety five. I was like, well, I'll take the parade of meats, please. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's the unable to resist. <laughs> then I can get whatever I want. I can eat. You know, I can sample a lot of different things. But from, it's right. unable to resist. Right. Because basically sense. the other options just don't seem like that great of a value. And wh well, why not? They get five more dollars and I get to do exactly what I want. I love that. I love that. So what's, what's interesting is um, I feel like with pricing, there's, there's different components that come into pricing, right? So we mm -hmm. think about pricing strategy, mm -hmm. which is what we were just discussing. So strategy yes. is about how are we laying out our price list? How many collections are we offering? How do we steer them? Right. to where we want them to go. And, and the first step being just what do we want our, <clears throat> our average to be? You right. know, what are we projecting? Right. So um, keeping all of that stuff in mind, once you actually start putting your products into your collections, the mm -hmm. next piece that we run into is just making sure that those collections are profitable. Right. Right. So making sure that you're making the markup that you need to make. Mm -hmm. um, I know PPA recommends 25% cost of sales um, on, on products. So when you're creating those, those collections mm -hmm. you're keeping that in mind. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. We basically, I sit down when I'm tweaking or making a price list, I sit down and actually, so I'll include what's once I've set the averages and then I set what's going to be in the packages. And then I actually go to each one and I figure up cost of sales for each thing, what it's going to cost me to print, what it's going to cost me to package it, what it's going to cost, all of those things. And I really, this is really important. I take into account that if a lot of photographers tend to like say, well, you know, I'll be doing the retouching or I'll be doing this, I'll be doing right, the color correcting. Right. And so they don't really put that into the equation of how much that cost is. They're just eating up their own time. And I try to sit down and figure out that if tomorrow, like I broke my arms and legs and I really literally couldn't do anything, right. how much would it cost me to produce an eight by 10? And they had to outsource everything. You have to outsource everything from color correction to retouching, to archiving it to a CD, right, right. to yeah. packaging it. I mean, that's, if, and you can literally, you can go to any lab and you, you can check box all of those things. So go in, mm -hmm. <laughs> check box, color correct, retouch, you know, um, package, because you can get packaging now at all the labs and archive it and see how much it costs to produce that one image. Right. And it's a lot more than people realize and they're doing that work, right, but they're right. not really charging it or figuring into their cost of sales. Great. But I sit down with my five and so I know this package costs, you know, X, Y, Z to, to produce every one of them and I sit down and figure out. And guess what? You know, some things too, as we go up in price, so if people start spending $2,000, the profit margin might not be as high as it is in my third mid package, right. but they're also, my profit is a Much lot higher. higher. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's kind yeah. of hard to explain. So for each package that you have, you know exactly what your cost of sales is yes. and you know how much profit each collection. Each collection is going to yield. So, you know, if you had five set out, you know, you might yield for the midline, you might yield $500 or what, I don't know. That's Whatever. just an arbitrary price. And then you might go up to the next one and it only yields 800, but it, but I got $800 <laughs> for that one hour session. So I got $300 right. more. Right. The percentage wasn't quite as profitable, but I got $300 more. Right. So that's all the thing that I'm always trying to figure out too when I have these averages is how can I get another $100 out of everybody that walks through the door or 150? How can I tweak this price list so that I can achieve a little higher average? Right, right. And, or, or, you, know. you know, one of the things we talked about for your Christmas promotion that I loved was um, the way that you designed your order form. Mm -hmm. So that there's an expectation of order, right? right? So you, you um, anticipate and, and it's almost like there's no way to say no, like this is just what everybody does. Right. Uh -huh. So you set up their order form for what they're going to order. Do you do that with your boutique sales as well? 
Sort of, because I, I mean, they don't really take home an order form for that because we're not trying to do this order within 20 minutes. But the pricing structure itself does that. So okay. in at the end, so what do I do next? <laughs> right. You know, you right. need to select the number of poses um, that you want to choose from. Then, you know, select your package. But mm -hmm. a lot of times if, you know, the packages have poses in them, so if, if they have 15 poses that they like and they're trying to go into an, a package that maybe only has five poses, then they have to go up or right. they have to get rid of some of those poses. So all your collateral pieces kind of walk them through exactly what they should be exactly doing. Exactly what they need to do. So pick, you know, pick your poses, pick your package select your grad cards, you know, so we're leading them. It's very assumptive. That, right. That th <laughs> this is what everybody does and this is what you have to do. So I like to let a lot of the pricing structure do the work for me because right. I don't want to sit with every person and sit there and explain that. I'm not that great at the um, sales. Right. I think a lot of photographers aren't, especially if you're selling your especially own work. Especially if you're selling yourself because basically yeah. you are and you're selling your own work. It's really complicated. So I like to make the price list do most of the work yeah, for that me. Yeah, makes a lot of sense. And if you do set, set your price list and structure correctly, mm -hmm. that's what we were talking about earlier with those goals right, and understanding right. what you need it to do, mm -hmm. you can actually, and, and that's what they do. They, other companies do this. Restaurants do it. They set their pricing structure up to make you do specific things. Right, right. So you're leading them in. Um, one of the things that we talked about earlier also was um, you have this great analogy mm -hmm. for, um, and I know you, you alluded to the fabric industry, mm -hmm. um, but kind of using that analogy as, uh, to describe the different um, product lines that a photographer mm -hmm. may have. Can you kind of go over that? Yeah, well, you know, like I said before, a lot has changed in the industry. Um, you know, I've always sold prints. We're not like a digital, we don't really sell digital files. Uh, we give low res mm -hmm. in addition to prints. Um, but I was trying, thinking about trying to create an analogy so that I could understand my product that I'm selling mm -hmm. in a different market. So I'm right. always looking every time I'm creating pricing yeah. at other markets and trying to see how they sell to people okay. and how they reach people, how they, they the, put the buttons they push to get people to, to buy their product. So I started trying to think about what our products were in a different market and how it would appear to other people. Okay. And so the, the only one I really could come up with sort of like the clothing industry Mm -hmm. um, analogy. So in that you would have, um, at the very, very low end, you would have something like a raw material, um, like fabric. Okay. And for, to me, like a digital, if you're going to sell a digital file where you're not really finishing the finished piece to deliver to the client, you're only delivering the digital file. That's a very comparable type mm -hmm. of, of product that you would sell. Sure. Um, and then you would move into like a department store, which a department store is like Macy's or something like that, where it's kind of like off the rack. Mm -hmm. So it's some, you know, they can go in. It's definitely the, the consumer's not making the product. The product is delivered, but you go in it, you might try on a dress. It may, you know, four may fit on one dress, but not on another dress or mm -hmm. whatever. So it's very department store, kind of off the rack. It's going to fit some people and not fit some people. Mm -hmm. So you do have a lot of options at a department store. Right. But so, so that's a different business model. And then the last business model would be like a boutique model. Mm -hmm. So in the boutique, you know, you would come in, I mean, I would measure you from head to toe. I would completely customize a gown just for you. Right, it would right. fit to a T and it would be, you know, a lot of, a lot of work. I'd spend a lot more time with you. Experience and it, is very, the very experience different. experience is, is, is very different, very high. And you would um, come away with a totally unique product created just for you. Mm -hmm. So that, to me, that was a really great analogy to understand. And, and for me, when you set up pricing, it's, if you think about that, mm -hmm. you know, one is obviously very low volume and one is very high volume and then one somewhere in between. And, and it's interesting. So I think as photographers or what kind of studio you're going to run, you have to decide, are you going to be you really high volume? Or are you going to be low volume? Or are you going to be somewhere in between? And, and the other thing is your business model, like mine actually, meets in different markets or different products that I sell, different lines. It's different. Okay. So, so for the Christmas event, it's a very high volume. Right. Low right. cost, low cost, you know. And a very different clientele. And a very different clientele. To my high school senior work, mm -hmm. which is very high end, I do, you know, 60 or under seniors a year. 
you know, 60 at the max. Right. And their average is $2,000. It's an experience. We're going to go where they want to go. They're going to change multiple times. It's, it's going to be very unique. We're going to create them a custom graduation announcement, right. you know, that they purchase, obviously. But again, it's too very unique, but in the same business. Right. So right. And that's part of sitting down and deciding what a line or what you're going to be and understanding that and then creating a price list. So those price lists are Indeed. very different. How many different price lists do you have? Um, well, right now <laughs> I really have three, <laughs> um, but I can have a lot it, it sometimes, but mo most time it's three. So I have a high school senior price list. Okay. Um, and generally like I have general portraiture that I do day to day, mm -hmm. you know, that includes newborns, uh, babies, families, and all of that line. And then the, the high volume stuff, which is Christmas or event. I mean, I usually do two events a year, one at Christmas and one at Easter. We do a prom same thing. It's a very um, high volume, mm -hmm. similar type of deal. So usually I have about three to four price lists. Like the prom varies a little from the Christmas because we're not selling the same items. Right, same right. thing for seniors. I'm not selling seniors the same thing that I'm selling for newborns. Right. But the price right. points are completely different. So like in the Christmas one, the, the entry, the lowest package is $90 and the highest package is like 275. But for a high school senior, the lowest is 600. Right, you know, and right. the highest being, you know, like 3,000. Right. So you can see the, the, the difference. In that's the, all focused on what it is that you're trying to achieve. Exactly. And how many of the sessions you're going to end up right. doing. And that's why those goals are so important to understand what you're trying to achieve when you're making a price list. You know, we looked at some numbers and that mm -hmm. I thought were really, um, were really interesting. Um, and it was the how many sessions you have to do at a given average mm -hmm. to achieve, you know, just a hundred thousand yeah. dollars. You know, if we're just looking at that at that round number, um, and the differences between the um, between the the high, you know, the high, the high, high, high volume, <laughs> the, the high volume, <laughs> the raw product, the raw, and yeah. the boutique studio. And um, it's like cra it's like crazy when I when I did this, I'm like, oh, oh my god. I can't, it's not just possible. numbers. This is just this numbers. This is just numbers. Just and it. I came up with an arbitrary number because a lot of people asked me, I said, well, let's just do 100,000. You need to do 100,000 in sales and let's figure it out. Let's figure out what we're going to do. Okay. So um, I decided that at the, that the low end or the volume, um, you know, I'd said, okay, well, let's say 200, $200. You have a session, you sell the session, you, it's $200 and you get all the files and you walk away and that's it. So that's your that's your sale point. For the high in the boutique, uh, 2,000, that's my average. So let's go with that number. So I wanted to see how many sessions I would have to do and how long those would take. Okay, yeah. So I wanted to see like, c is this even feasibly possible? Right. <laughs> to, hit, to do this. So what I found was, it, it obviously at the boutique end for $2,000, I would have to do 50 sessions to hit the $100,000 mark. So okay. 50 sessions. And like I told you, those are usually the average is three hour, a three hour session. Right, so in the three hours, I would figure it up. I could do 15 a week. That's doing, I sort of figured up doing um, shooting, you know, from like eight hours a day s straight, right? No, actually nine hours a day. So I would, could do three a day in those three hour time slots. Okay. So I would do three a day, five days a week, and it would take me 3.3 .3 weeks to just photograph. Now that we're not talking about what's on the back end, just to photograph right, right. those 50 seniors. Okay. 3.3 .3 weeks. Okay. So I'm like, oh. Yeah, I can do that. I mean, I'm spreading okay, that out actually right. over months, right? Sure. <laughs> so they, so on the the low end, the two hundred dollars. So the two hundred dollar a session, right? If I did again fifteen a week, let's say I only did fifteen. Now those would not be three hours, you know, in time, obviously. But if I did fifteen a week, five days, three per day, nine hours a day, same thing. It would take me thirty three and a third weeks. Wow. <laughs> so 11 times, <laughs> 11 times. Yes. And I decided that I couldn't literally shoot, you know, and some people are doing that. Some people are doing a senior session that's three hours yeah. and they're, they're basically give, you know, selling the files for $200. If I did that business model, it would take me 33.3 .3 weeks <laughs> to do that. I, and I, this is not back end work. This is literally taking the CF card <laughs> out of the camera and giving it to basically delivering right. it to them, not right. doing anything. Yeah. Um, that's a, that's an amazing analysis. And just, I mean, that, that kind of goes back to people just forgetting to value their time. 
right? right? Because this is a huge analysis of how you use your time and is that time being uh, used wisely? Mm -hmm. You know, could you use it to to make more money elsewhere? You right. Know, if you were if you were outsourcing. Yeah, for me, like that. It's I first of all, I would have, and that's the other thing is with the model, the two hundred dollar. I would have to do five hundred sessions as opposed to fifty at the two thousand dollar model. Wow, and that's a lot more clients to try to get in the door. Right. I I, I couldn't get five hundred senior clients. It's not possible. Right, right. So I know that's not possible. So $200 is never going to work for me. Right. Because I just, I just really like this analogy. Um, just as one of the things to keep in the back of your mind, uh, you know, as people are building their price list, just to really consider your time. You know, how is your time best spent? Um, and I've never seen somebody put this so concisely. I love, I love, love, love this analogy. I think that's fantastic. So, so kind of to wrap all this, all this up, I feel like um, you know, a lot of things that we've talked about are really in agreement with what PPA Yes. you know, recommends and some of the benchmarks that, that happen there, um, that, it, you know, you can't really price in a vacuum. You can't right. just decide what am I going to charge for an eight by 10 and build from there because there's no basis or foundation for exactly where you want to go. Um, so, you know, just a, a a quick thought for PPA members, they can actually go to ppa.com mm -hmm. and use the square one tool. We're really big on um, promoting people. Uh, PPA is really big on promoting that people go in and create sales and sessions projections. So they know how many sessions they need to photograph at what sales average to yield a, whatever dollar amount minus their general expenses and cost of sales. So they can really start to get a picture because I think one of those aha moments happens and you've I know you found this because you've done a lot of consulting for PPA, mm -hmm. that people don't realize that if they want to live, you know, they have a certain idea of success, whether it's, um, you know, I, I'm a, I'm a stay-at-home mom and I want to photograph three days a week right. and I want, you know, they, they know how much they want to work. When they realize, okay, well, that means I can only do 50 sessions a year, but I need to make this amount of money. Oh, wow. My average needs to be much higher than what I'm actually charging right Correct. now. So I'm sure you find that as well, trying to, trying to get them to kind of have that mental shift. Yeah, and that's one of the things as a, as a consultant that I try to do because I have 17 years of experience of understanding the averages that I achieve and what I'm trying to achieve, and I'm always still tweaking, but for per for persons that are really new into business, mm -hmm. I send them to PPA. Look at the benchmark, understand, use the Square One app. I mean, it's really gonna help you understand because I know that, for example, that one that we were talking about, those numbers, when I actually bring yeah. that up, in, in a classroom, I mean, you should just see people's jaws like drop to the floor because they're not really thinking about it in those terms, right. those numerical right. terms yeah. of how many, how many sessions I have to do and how long is that even going to take? Right. Exactly. You know? The whole big picture thinking. Right. Um, but if they begin with the end in mind, yes. then they can work towards that. Cause the other part, and we're going to talk about this in another segment, but you know, when you look at how many sessions you have to photograph and the average sale you need to get, right? So you're going to create your sale, your price list becomes the third thing you do, because you have to think about your strategy, right. your pricing strategy and how uh -huh. you're going to sell. Um, but then it, it kind of, again, is that aha moment when they go, well, am I doing enough to market to bring in that number of clients? Right. So then the, you know, you've got that piece that kind of plays into all of that. So um, I, just, I love the way you think. I love the way your business is put oh, together. Thanks. Thank you so much for, for sharing how oh. you do your pricing and putting all these pieces, um, because I think this is an area that people just really need a lot of help. Yeah, it's definitely an area that I get a lot of questions about, but thanks, thanks for having me. Hope I could help. <laughs> thanks. <laughs>